how does international arbitration fit the definition of international law and the concept of international law? Don't go anywhere. This is very interesting. Two seconds and we are at it. Hello everyone, my name is Maria Rupert, lawyer and arbitrator with a base in Dubai, in the UAE for the past almost 15 years. I'm happy to be with all of you with, um, with one of the, of the topics most requested in my channel, which is uh, guidance to, uh, to law students, uh, particularly those considering a career in international arbitration. The question that I want to address today is um, what is international law and how does uh, international arbitration fit within this, time, within this frame of international law? So what is international law? Uh, international law is a combination of uh, rules, principles and norms that help um, regulate the relationship and interactions between sovereign states and to another extent uh, some organizations and individuals as well as individuals may fall part of this um, interaction as well so what kind of of course a sovereign state is a sovereign state yeah, any any given country you can think of uh, but what players do we consider when we think about given organizations? The United, Na United Nations, the International uh, Court of Justice, the International Criminal Court, for example, are some of the organizations that create source of law. Yes, but it's very important. Uh, it's very important. And as we will see, one very important thing that uh, international law has in common with international arbitration is consent. Why? Because these sovereign countries, uh, in order to play within the framework of international law, they must consent to a number of, of treaties. Yes? So when we talk about international law, we talk about the relationship, the relationship of sovereign states international organizations, some individuals, and the, uh, the treaties to which uh, they, they, they are part, yes? So the subjects, we have states, we have international organizations. Um, I was forgetting the World Trade um, Organization as well, uh, um, as a key player in, in, in international law. Then we have some individuals, as we were saying, uh, and then, uh, within this broad concept of international law, where we can be talking about human rights, yes, we can be talking about a growing field, which is environmental law. Um, the world is looking into green initiatives more and more, and environmental law is key. The use of force, for example, the UN Charter on this restricts the, the use of force or allows it when it's permitted by the Security Council, yes? Um, so this is usually what, what we talk about when we talk about international law, human rights, environment, uh, UN, WTO, um, International Criminal Court, International uh, Court of Justice, yes? Now, um, what is international arbitration? International arbitration is a, is a method a dispute, to, to solve disputes, a dispute resolution method that it can involve two countries, yes? Uh, it can involve uh, two parties located uh, in different states, otherwise it would be domestic arbitration and wouldn't be international arbitration. International arbitration, and then it could involve a country, and it could involve a company or a person, and that's what we um, we know as investment arbitration, as opposed to commercial arbitration when it does not involve uh, a sovereign state. Yes, when we talk about the states, yes, in this case we wanna talk and wanna think about Washington DC. Uh, and ICSID, the International uh, Center 
for the settlement of international disputes, yes, of investment disputes. Um, when we don't talk about uh, states, uh, we have a number of organizations that uh, can provide guidance and provide rules. We have the International Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we also have Ancitro that provides guidance. We also have most uh, chambers of commerce, I wouldn't say in the whole world, but in the Western world, at least in the Gulf region, let's concentrate in the UAE, uh, they develop uh, rules to cover international arbitration. Why? Because the UAE is a hub for international business. So you see uh, maybe a UAE-based company against a Russian-based company, UAE company, UAE-based company versus a UK-based company, and this is or UK investor, Spanish investor, you name it. Yes, but there is a company usually and a and a party. You can also see individuals, but it's is 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 less uh, less common. Yes because we are talking about commercial arbitration. Of course, they could be uh, service providers and there will be the possibility, but less likely, usually you have a company uh, or two companies. Um, but going back to the commonality, we also have treaties. Yes, um, when states are involved and they don't necessarily need to be involved as, a, as a, an arbitration party, they could be involved because we need to, to go to a given country to execute for their recognition and enforcement of an arbitral award. So here is very important the New York Convention um, on the recognition and enforcement of uh, international arbitral awards. Yes, countries, and we go to consent, they need to consent to be uh, a party to, to, to this convention. It's very common. Most countries uh, are members. And this is something when you do business in a country that you want to check. Because if something happens with the company you are doing business with, uh, you may need to execute something against them, something meaning an arbitral award. And in that case, it would be very helpful to you to understand if, uh, if they are members or not. And going back, consent. Um, international law is consent, if it's one thing. Um, how do parties become um, parties to an arbitration? By consent. How do we call consent international arbitration? Arbitration agreement. Very important, the arbitration agreement. Very important that this arbitration agreement is properly drafted, avoiding ambiguities and and hopefully, and this is in the very extreme, making it complete, completely unusable. Uh, this is what is known as pathological clauses. Yes. <clears throat> now, this we have covered, what this international law, how does international law fit the framework of international law? And going back to a question that I get from so many of you, how do you choose? How do you choose? between the fields of international, of international law. Look inside. What is your passion? If you are already studying law, what is that? And maybe by doing this, you will walk away from international law or you will walk away from international arbitration. But what is that subject that, that, that makes you stay up longer at night doing additional research, uh, drafting longer, revising, what is the subject that inspires the, the most uh, interest in you? Because guess what? It doesn't matter. And I remember when I was trying to decide what to do, I went to, to, to Washington, D.C., and I wanted to do international law, but more on the human rights uh, sector. I had loads of, of doubt. And I think doubt comes when in your mind it sounds great, but your heart does not follow. That's when you have doubt. If your heart is seen, there is no doubt. So, so what you need to do is to, to expose yourself. And this is what I did during my first uh, week. Uh, they allow you to take uh, to drop courses and add courses. So I said, I'm going to go to as many courses as I can. So I actually, I, I fell in love with the field of arbitration and its potential. So my heart was all in. 
uh, it was emotion that uh, the head is great and don't forget about it, please. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you need to do what moves you. And this, just think about things that have happened in your life. Think about decisions that you're trying to make now. And uh, I'm hoping that you will agree with me that the decisions that you make uh, without doubts are the ones that your emotions are in. Yeah. If it's only your head, maybe you can choose a job that will give you today perhaps a, a higher paid position. But at the end of the day, if you are not good at it, how is that going to give you a better salary? So you want to choose something that you're going to fight a lot. So you will dedicate more hours than the rest. Uh, you will stay on the top 10. And if you are on the top 10 of, of, of whatever you decide, you should be having a, a good quality of life. And most important, you will love every day from Monday to Sunday. You know, those people who are looking forward to the weekend. Hey, don't read me wrong. I also enjoy the weekend, but I love when Monday comes and I have my list of to do's because I love what I do. Yeah, so I think that's the best that could, could happen to any professional. So I hope you have learned a little bit. Um, uh, it has given you some guidance. If so, please do like. Uh, do like my video. Please do subscribe to get to new uh, information as soon as, as soon as it's out. Also, you can follow me on social media as I talk about other things other than my YouTube uh, channel if you are interested in the practice of, uh, of an international lawyer. Thank you very much for, for watching. Thank you for your loyalty. And as always, I look forward to general questions that can be of help to others like you. Thank you very much.